Razzabani for fighthype.com. He's back again. I'm back again. I'm talking about the blonde hair. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the blonde hair. You went blonde again. I've gone back blonde. You know, I didn't think I was going to go blonde again, but it was a spontaneous one. I feel like I want to enjoy my freedom in life. You know, I'm free to go blonde. I ain't got. I ain't got to walk into work and my boss be like, "Listen, the customers are going to be offended if you go blonde. The customers are going to think this. The customers are going to think that." Nah, I can do what I want. I am the boss. <laughs> Oh, Dee, it's been a while since I've spoken to you. Obviously, I know what's been going on recently. You had your first fight with under Frank Ward mm. in Leeds. Mm. Um, it's your second fight now. Mm. I know you've done, you do your own vlogs now on your own YouTube channel and mm. you kind of explained your transition. Yeah. But how's that transition been? It's been, it's been great. It's, it's gone smooth. The only thing that's been quite tough, that was quite tough, was adjusting, you know, getting in my mind. It's time to Frank Ward now, not to Eddie Hearn. I'm under. Carlos Menos, not under Tony Sims. Wake up in the morning, drive to the new gym. Don't drive to Brentwood. Like it's just these things, and um, that was hard getting adjusted to the change. But now I've fully adjusted to it. I'm happier than I've ever been. Obviously, your opponent there, um, Kamanga. He obviously spoke about his emotional story, mm. about obviously he had someone he lost recently. His grandmother, he said. Mm. Uh, um, yeah. He's coming at very short notice. You obviously got Roberto Garcia fighting Martin Murray. He's coming at very short notice. Isn't it risky for fighters to take those short notices? And when they do take those short notices, do you feel like they're not actually coming here to win? They're actually coming to get paid. Is that how you feel? That's not how I feel because I know like he's been in the gym. I, I saw him get on the scales. Listen, he's, he, he's looking rip, ripped as hell. So he's been in, he's been in the gym. He's been training. It's like me. I didn't fight in about seven months. I was still in the gym every like every day. I was in I was in the gym. So even these guys, even if they take it on short notice. They've been in the gym, they've been working hard and they've been training. So otherwise they won't take a fight. They'll be like way overweight, they'll be massive fat. But listen, from when you're in shape and you're taking a fight on twelve days notice, you've been in the gym. So I'm not falling for that trick. I'm gonna prepare like I've never like I you know what I mean, like it's my first fight. How's the relationship obviously with with you a new trainer? Because obviously sometimes it does take time to bond. Um, to be honest, with this thing, I've always been training under him. When I was, even when I was under him, I had to do this on the side, twice a week, two, three days a week. But now it's just full time. So we didn't, we, we didn't really need to grow our bonds because we had one already. So yeah, it's been quite easy to be honest. Been very vocal on Twitter, calling out Mauricio Hooker. I know who's mm. recently became well. Is a recently won the world title uh, against your, your other good friend Terry Flanagan. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't look like it might it will materialize with yourself and Hooker. It looks like Hooker might go to World Boxing Super Series, but is that a fight that is on the radar? Yeah, hundred percent. If he's got the title, let's say he's the best. He's or that he's one of the best. He's known. He's got a world title. I want him. I ain't going out against him. I just want his belt. But if he goes in the World Boxing Super Series, then I wish him all the best. It's just business, you know, he'll earn more money in there. I understand how the game works. I ain't got nothing against him. I just want his belt. Do you feel the World Boxing Super Series, obviously a lot of fighters are now starting to enter season yeah. two with a lot of big names, a lot of world champions. Is it something that you would potentially consider in the future? Listen, let him phone me up right now and ask me to go in there. Hell yes, I'm getting on there. You get paid so much money going on that thing. Listen, I want the money. <laughs> Uh, what else has been going on, O'Hara? What, what's been uh, going on in the life of OD? Ladies, much. women, camp girls, that's all I hear. No more camp girls. Camp girls is like a tradition that's done now. There'll be no more camp girls ever. I'm a single man, you know, yeah. enjoying life. I saw a video about any, any girls under the age of 20, mm -hmm. not to slide into <laughs> DMs. But what's I, going on? Some girls did my DMs last night. I look on her, on her picture. This girl looks about 15 years old. I was thinking, hell no. I get so many young girls, because they're hanging around like certain people for, from Essex and their fan base are more people that are young that watch the TV shows there's more young girls and young guys that watch it so when they put up a picture of me I'm getting all the young little fans on my, on my inbox I'm like get the hell out of here so a message to the, any girls that are under the age of 20 if you're under 20 years old you can't go there <laughs> I, I saw, uh, as I was travelling here this morning, I saw uh, an Instagram post that you put up today of uh, Lord Sugar. Yeah. Is that his name? Yeah, Lord Sugar, yeah. Lord Sugar. He tweeted something that I felt like, why would you tweet that for? I don't think he's a racist. I, I, I doubt he's a racist. I know he's not a racist. So for those who don't know what we're talking about, we're basically what we're saying is um, the Senegal football team yeah. who won their game the other day, uh, obviously all African mm. natives, um, and he put a tweet saying that Something in the words, and I quote, 
close to his words yeah. that uh, he swears that he saw some of them at a beach yeah, in Spain, resort. Because you see in Spain they got all the uh, they got all the black men that sell you the sunglasses and the fake chains and all that. He was like, they look like the Senegal football team, look like them. And I don't think that's racist. That's not racist, but why would you say that? Like, I hang around a bunch of white guys. You, like, I've got so many white friends. And when we day, like, if I'm the only black guy, like, yeah, like, we make jokes about race. You make jokes all the time about, about race. But you've got to know when to draw the line. And if anyone should know when to draw the line, it'll be him. So I don't think he's a racist, no. He's not, I doubt he's a racist. But he, in that situation, he should have known when to, where to draw the line and not have been there. I read the comments on your Instagram post, and a lot of people mm -hmm. were saying, oh, calm down, he's joking, he's having a laugh and banter. Yeah. But do you feel like, yeah, he's not a racist, but with his following mm -hmm. and his name, he should know a lot better? Yeah, I know it was a joke, I believe it was a joke, but I believe it was a joke taken too far. Like I said, I don't think he's a racist, but listen, he took that joke way too far. You don't go there, you don't say certain stuff. Yeah, yeah I make jokes about race all the time. Right, with all my white friends, I make jokes all the time about them. They make jokes about me. But certain lines you don't cross, but you don't go past that level of, of a joke. Mm. And it's, it's a line that he crossed. A horror, you know, many, many, maybe last year, I think it was, when you were having conversation mm. on interviews and stuff like that about Ashley Theobain. I don't know if you remember, mm. and called him a bum, etc. etc. He's obviously now being, he's obviously now left maybe with the promotions and he's moved back to the UK and hopefully he hopes to be working with Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, etc. Is that a potential fight that can now materialize? Yeah, that's a potential fight, but I think, ask me, I think Ashley Fairplay will go on to Small Horse Show. He'll, he'll go on to Small Horse Show boxing. Listen, who knows Ashley Fairplay? What has he got to offer? He's not a name, or well, they'll put him in with, with a prospect and get him beat and then. Send him back to small horse shows. Actually, Pepe is on his way out. He's about 40 years old. What's he still doing in boxing anyway? Like, he'll have one or two fights. If Eddie Home gets him on, it'll be to fight one of his prospects. You know what I mean? Get beat. Actually, Ashley is a nice name to have in your boxing record. You know what I mean? He's a nice name. And I'm sure he can do with another paydays or two, another few paychecks, and um, then he'll be out. But certainly you would entertain it if it quite became available. Because he hasn't signed it yet, I'm just yeah. saying that he said that he'd like to have Eddie Henry yeah, Frank. Like I said, if that fight came available, I'll say, I'll say yeah. But he ain't someone that I've got on my radar. He's not a big name. He ain't, actually, Fipe is not anything to me, but um, a name to have on my record. Mm. He ain't a champion. He ain't going to be champion. Mm. champion. He's just a bum.